Hello traders and welcome to our TradeMastery.com video channel for active traders designed to help you become more successful. In this episode we're going to take a look at the critical role of volume and volatility and how to use them to help you determine what's worth day trading in your own active trades. Coming up right now. Now I've been day trading since the late 90s, way back in the day, and one of the things that I've learned is especially critical to my own trading success and doing thousands of real money day trades is the role of volume and volatility, the two V's that we need in our favor or in our, in our basket as a trader. What you want to start looking for are those instruments with wide trading ranges that have lots of liquidity or a lot of volume so it's easy to get in and out and tighten up your spreads or the cost of doing business with that instrument. One of the things that traders around the world have been asking me for many years is how do I determine what is worth day trading? Now back when I first started, quick story back in the day, uh, we'd only trade the high flyers, momentum stocks. Nobody or hardly anybody would trade things like penny stocks or small cap under $10 junk stocks uh, or instruments like e-mini futures or other uh, things that are riskier and choppier. Instead we focused on the high flyers. Stocks would run up multiple points in a given open right during the first 20-30 minutes you might get a point or two out of them. Okay. Now in our current market one of the things that I've seen kind of uh, very dangerous to the trading community is a lot of educators out there trying to teach people to trade penny stocks or small cap stocks or uh, e-mini futures because uh, they're trying to reach people that are basically not capitalized enough or don't have enough money to day trade professionally. So instead they do risky instruments that have compressed ranges with low volatility that they have to trade thousands of shares or dozens of contracts or whatever uh, to try and make a go of it. And that's a failing strategy. Take a look at this grid that I put together. I just developed this yesterday for the world's traders and it's very important that you understand kind of on the x-axis and the y-axis we've got volume and volatility. There's four different quadrants of types of instruments to trade. The worst thing that you can do when you're trying to day trade is to trade instruments that have low volume and low volatility. And that's in the lower left quadrant of this diagram that you're looking at. Uh, the reason is uh, you have large spreads uh, and it's much riskier if you're trying to trade say scalping e-mini futures contracts or scalping penny stocks or cheap stocks that don't have enough trading range. By that I mean, you know, as a day trader I'm trading stocks where I'm looking to get 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 cents or more with a target around 30 to 50 cents out of my day trades. If you're, you can't do that by and large with cheap under $10 stocks, you know, and similarly e-mini futures contracts during all the days which the markets range bound, which is the majority of them, uh, you'll see very choppy price action. So although you can get started day trading with a small account size in e-mini futures contracts, just a couple thousand dollars, the upfront risk is much higher because they don't run as far. Unless you're in a big rally day or a big sell-off day, which is the exception and not the rule. Okay, so when it comes to day trading, give preference to instruments like I have in the upper right quadrant where you've got high volume and high liquidity and high volatility. So instruments that trade, you know, at least 15,000 shares a minute that have at least a one point trading range where you can trade during 9.30 to 10 or 10.15 and potentially get 30 or 50 cents out of them without having to trade thousands of shares. Okay. In the low volatility category, all the instruments like penny stocks or low float under $10 stocks that you'd have to trade thousands of shares to try and scalp a dime or 20 cents and that's a failing approach and the reason is your upfront risk is too high. I'm all about managing risk as a day trader and one of the things that I've taught thousands of people at Day Trading University and Trade Mastery over many years is the fact that we want to minimize our upfront risk and play wide not deep. So it's much smarter as a day trader to trade three, four, five, six instruments, throw darts at those that are moving, take really tight stops or break even stops on those that don't run and the ones that do run you manage until they start to pivot and then close out the trade and I go back to cash. Okay. So what you're looking at doing is trading a small basket of instruments 
with smaller share size so that your upfront risk per trade is much smaller. See, the wrong way to day trade is to try and trade, say, a five or six dollar stock with two or three thousand shares trying to get 10 or 20 cents out of it because you'll take too many big stops trying to get one that actually works out. Think about it. If you trade 3,000 shares of, say, a six dollar stock, and it goes even 10 cents against you right out of the gate, which happens more often than not, you're down $300 right before you knew what hit you. Uh, and that magnifies if you trade larger share size. So one of the disturbing trends that I've seen with amateurs, these so-called day trading educators with less than 20 years experience, and they're usually in their 30s or 40s, or young guys who haven't been trading very long, they try and advocate trading cheap stocks with large front risk, with large thousands of shares on the front end. And that upfront risk makes it much more dangerous and much more likely that you blow up your trading account. Of course, before people realize what hits them, they try and upsell people into expensive multi-thousand dollar courses and stupid proprietary indicators that don't work and try and suck as much money out of those poor traders as they can before they realize, hey, that was a failing strategy, it didn't work. Instead, the right way to day trade and if my life depended on it, you have my word on this, it's very important to minimize your upfront risk. Think about it, and that makes sense, right? If you're a day trader, you want to minimize your risk. It's all about risk management. So you should not be trading 3,000 or 2,000 shares of anything right out of the gate because the cost of being wrong, even very 10 or 20 cents, is hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It can blow up your trading account like that. Especially if you don't have a 25K or better trading account to meet the pattern day trading rule, uh, you don't want to risk it. So instead, it's smarter, in my professional opinion, to trade, say, five or six instruments that are $20, $30 a share that have one point previous day's trading ranges. Or my favorite pattern is gap continuations, a small bullish cup and a gap continuation. You may have seen my articles in Stocks and Commodities Magazine, Equities.com, or my presentations at Money Show on the topic of minor gap continuations. I'm an expert in gap trading. But we still want to focus on charts that are maybe 30, 40 bucks a share with minor small gaps under a point or so that do a bullish cup and continue on up. You know, or two day high breakouts, things above the previous day's high that's likely to attract institutional traders. You have my word, the complete wrong way to day trade is to trade penny stocks or three and four or five dollar small cap stocks with thousands of shares of risk, uh, just trying to trade one or two instruments a day. That's a failed approach. Because odds are, you know, even out of, say, 10 trades, half of them are going to stop out or more. Uh, and you want the cost of being wrong to be as small as possible. So if you take a look back at this grid that I put together, it's designed to show you the difference in types of the things that you can trade to help you choose what makes sense. Of the two, it is smarter to trade things, in my opinion, like uh, if you have to trade, uh, you know, instruments that don't cost as much, uh, it's, uh, I think it's smarter to trade things like e-mini futures or uh, large cap stocks like Microsoft or Intel uh, if you have to choose those kind of things over penny stocks or cheap stocks. Those are the absolute worst. But it, those don't have enough volatility to make it worthwhile. So lots of liquidity in e-minis and large caps like Microsoft or Intel or other large cap stocks you may have heard of, but they don't move much. The e-minis don't move much. Large cap stocks generally don't move much either. What you want are the, kind of the sweet spot in the middle. You don't want cheap stocks. You don't want overly expensive large cap stocks. You want things in the middle that have nice wide ranges, right? And those are the instruments that I've made the cornerstone of my professional approach and why so many thousands of traders have trusted me over the last near 20 years I've been running daytradinguniversity.com and trademastery.com. And so if you look at evaluating what's worth day trading, you need to have two things in place. You need to have volume and volatility. If it fails, whatever you're considering trading, if it fails one of those two critical tests, then just say no, stop the madness. There's got to be a better instrument. So the fatal flaw of, say, e-mini trading is that during choppy days, you're going to get stopped out. And that's, you know, at least half the trading days of any given week. At least half the days are going to be choppy, do-nothing days. So you're going to get stopped out. Uh, that combined with high risk, you know, like 8 or 16 or 20 contracts trying to get 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 ticks is a failed approach. Uh, by and large, day traders, we weren't trading e-mini futures back in the late 90s, early 2000s. That was a very niche, tiny market. For some reason, I think it's because people think there's some, it's kind of like fool's gold. 
There's a false economy, penny wise, pound foolish to start. Let me start a $2,000 e-mini futures day trading account. They'll promptly blow up all their money uh, because those are not volatile enough to make the odds worthwhile. Unless you're in a big rally market breakout day, which is kind of once out of five days at best. So you don't want to day trade the e-minis as a rule of thumb unless you're in a rally market. That's the only exception. And we've had rally days, so it's not like you shouldn't day trade at all e-minis, but in my professional opinion, I think any index tied instrument, and that includes things like the spiders, the diamonds, the Qs, any of those index ETFs or the VIX ETNs, anything that's tied to a market should only be traded during hot market days. Okay. Uh, similarly, the worst instruments to trade are going to be low volume, low float, uh, cheap under $10 stocks. These get circuit breaker halts that frequently gap against traders, wiping out hundreds if not thousands of dollars. You have to trade thousands of shares to try and scalp dimes or 20 cents out of those cheap stocks. And those make for too much upfront risk. The intelligent, correct way to day trade, you know, I'm one of the world's top authorities in day trading the equity markets and have been since the 90s, uh, is to trade a basket with smaller share size, 500 at most 1,000 shares. But if you're a newer trader, maybe just a few hundred shares of five instruments is a lot smarter than 3,000 shares of one cheap instrument and hope that it runs. Okay, and that's the truth of the situation. So I hope that that clarifies and gives you some guidance in terms of, you know, look at that grid that shows you the four different quadrants. The best quadrant is high volume, high volatility. Volume of at least 15,000 shares per minute so that you don't get subject to uh, big spreads. You know, you don't want to have three or four or five cent or bigger spreads because uh, that costs you too much just to do business to get in and out of the trade. Similarly, you don't want charts that are down in the under $10 a share range that only have like a 50 cent total trading range and you've got to trade thousands of shares to try and hope and get 20 cents out of it. That's going to cost you a lot of money in upfront stops that cost a lot. Again, you trade 3,000 shares of a $5 stock and it goes 10 cents against you, which happens all the time, you're down $300 before you knew what hit you. 20 cents and you're down $600. So don't be trading two and 3,000 shares. Uh, I think that's completely irresponsible for anybody to try and teach day traders that. The correct way is to manage your risk by trading a small handful. You don't have to trade 20 or 30 instruments, but four or five, I think most of us can manage four or five instruments in and out uh, during the open for our day trade. So I hope that helps. This is Ken Calhoun, Day Trading University and TradeMastery.com. Uh, if you have any questions, do you have any questions about how to decide what to trade or anything like that, go ahead and post in the area below. I always like to see your comments. Your comments are my oxygen. I don't usually get a ton of comments, but it's always good to see smart, intelligent questions or comments. Uh, subscribe and give the, the video a like if you like it. And until next time, trade with passion, trade with real small stops with a wide basket of instruments and try and get out there and make as much money as you can. So. Go get them and best wishes for success in your trades.